Hi, I'm Doris Jepson, and in this video segment, I'm going to show you how to initiate a PCA3 pump. In preparation for viewing this segment, you should already have viewed the video that shows how to set up a PCA pump. You should also have reviewed the protocol for caring for a patient with an IV site. The first portion of the initiation can actually be done in the medication room, or it can be done here at the patient's bedside. Always remember to observe standard precautions and to identify your patient, uh, use the five rights of medication administration, and don't forget to inform your patient about what you're doing. This is the equipment that you're going to need for the setup. We have the PCA pump uh, that we've set up with medication uh, already in the medication room. You will need the PCA key, which opens the pump and you will need your patient controlled analgesia record which is a form that your facility supplies uh, for documentation purposes. You'll want your patient's chart so that you can compare the orders with what you are actually uh, administering to the patient. And a couple other items you'll want some alcohol swabs and a normal saline flush. Next we're going to talk about the process for recording this procedure. The first step is to initiate the PCA record for documentation. To do this, you'll need the help of a second licensed nurse. I've positioned the PCA record here so that you can see uh, how it looks. And as you're doing this procedure, one of you will be filling out this form while you're watching the values on the pump, and the other nurse will be actually scrolling through the pump to find the information. So it's a process that involves two people. The first column asks you to put in the date and the next one the time. Third column wants the name of the drug. Some facilities have forms that have the name of the drug preprinted. If not, you'll need to write it into this column and don't use abbreviations. Write the name out completely. The next column asks the strength and this drug is supplied as 5 milligrams per milliliter, so that's what you'd write in this column. The next column asks the PCA mode and wants to know the dose delay. So the physician in this case has ordered 1 milligram with a lockout of every 12 minutes, so that's what we would write in this column. Moving this form over so you can see the next portion of it. The next listing is for the basal rate, which is the continuous rate. The physician didn't order any for this particular uh, patient, so we would just write zero. And when we write zero on your PCA form, always draw a diagonal line through it. And I'll show you how that looks in a minute. There's no four-hour limit ordered, nor loading bolus. If there was a loading bolus, we would write that amount in this column. The cumulative dose will be zero because we're just starting the pump, as will the completed and the denies. Clearing the volume uh, should have happened automatically if the pump has been turned off for more than an hour, but if it has not, then you will need to clear out the previous volume and history of the patient that was using this pump before. Let me move this over one more time so you can see the rest of this form. Um, you'll want to assess your patient's pain level on a scale from 0 to 10. His level of consciousness, which is his sedation level, and there are scales on your form that show uh, what these values mean to help you decide which is the most appropriate numbers to put in. You'll want to check the clamp to make sure that it is unclamped. You'll put the left account here and uh, because this is a new in, uh, infusion with a new vial, it'll probably be 29 or th the full 30 milliliters. It does take a little bit of medication in order to prime the tubing. Your patient's respiratory rate goes in the next column. And then the last column, will you will put the initials of both of the nurses who are checking this form. And then down at the bottom of the form, both of you will initial and put your signatures. 
Now I'm going to show you the PCA pump portion of this. Now you're ready to connect the PCA tubing to your patient's IV site. The first thing you're going to want to do is to assess the IV site and make sure that it's patent. Uh, you'll bring in your normal saline flush in and go ahead and flush it. And the site is patent. Next we'll connect our tubing. We'll turn our IV to run. Now if the patient already had an IV fluid infusing, we could have used that as a flush for our PCA line. It's just a matter of connect, uh, connecting it in the room and flushing that short piece of tubing, getting the air out of it before you connect it to the patient. Once you've connected it to the patient, you want to make sure that all your clamps are open. And if your PCA has a continuous mode, you want to press start to begin that conf infusion. Uh, you will finish your patient assessment on your PCA record and you want to make sure that your patient understands how to use the PCA pump. So you'll give him instructions about that, explain to him about the time frame on the lockout interval and how he can keep track of that. And you'll want to put the button that he pushes to obtain a dose in a place that's convenient for him to reach it. I always like to have the patient go ahead and administer a dose to begin with so that you can see that they know how to do it. So I will go ahead and press the button. You'll hear a noise. You'll hear it make a beep and that tells the patient that he is indeed getting a dose. While that's infusing, I will go ahead and attach it. I'm going to hook it to the patient's clothing there so he can find it. Sometimes patients like it connected to their bed rail along with their call light for them to be able to find it. So that's how you initiate a PCA.